were somewhere around Barstow, on the edge of the desert, when the drugs began to take hold. I remember saying something like, I feel a lightheaded, perhaps you should drive. Suddenly the sky was full of what looked like giant screeching bats. No point mentioning those bats, I thought. Poor bastard will see them soon enough. As you may be able to tell by my impersonation, we're going to discuss something that's brought us all together here today, from Foxosa Media becoming a friend of mine through Gonzo, to Dejansa becoming a friend of mine through Gonzo. Yep. So Hunter S. Thompson, and you said you wanted to ask me about Hunter S. Thompson. Do so. When did he first come across your radar? Uh, when I was 18, someone said, watch this film, Fear and Loathing, in Las Vegas, and I watched it. Introduction for a lot of people, probably, at our age. Obviously, it was a crazy film. Yeah. And I was just starting to get into sort of the more hard drugs at the time as well, and uh, so it was very uh, synchronised. Yeah. But then at the end, when it said, based on a book by Hunter S. Thompson, I thought, how the fuck could that be based on a book? How could you read that book? It's not possible to write like that. So I went and got the book and I read it like twice in a row because it blew my mind. Because I suppose it showed me that you don't have to write in any fashion. Irvin Welch came around the same time and he also showed me the same thing. You can write however you want. Yeah. As long as it's good. I mean... It's creativity, be free. Be you yourself, because that's who you are. Yeah. And uh, I'll go on record to say that I was never self-proclaimed as a gonzo music journalist. I was christened as a gonzo music journalist. I would never have proclaimed that myself. Uh, it was obviously good to be compared to someone who's an idol of mine, and I'm sure he has had an effect on my style. Of course he has. But he's not the only one to credit, you know. It's a mixture of all your influences. Definitely. Like any band is a mixture of all their musical influences. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And we're now a mixture of Hunter S. Thompson influences. Indeed we are. Um, I, the film, it, it was a, a psychedelic eye-opener for me as well. We, we watched it multiple times. We used to go back to have after parties back at my mate Shug's house which would obviously last throughout the night and then into the next day and usually kind of around about the, I don't know, sometimes like 68 or 79 in the morning hours uh, would pop on a film. Um, we used to watch Blazing Saddles a lot when we came home yeah. and then do like the Mad Barn Dance, Camptown Lady Barn Dance. And it was Monty uh, Python for me. Well, I Monty yeah, Python as well, but well, that's, that's like, to come back to Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. If anybody, and I was the same as you, like, when I watched the film, I was aware of them. I'd read some of his stuff, but I don't think I'd ever sat down and read like, an entire book of his. Um, and I thought to myself, like, how accurate a representation, depiction of a book could this be as a film? But if anybody was going to do it as good as Terry the book Gilliam. itself, then it would be Terry Gilliam. Right? Yeah. And, and hats off to Johnny Depp for spending hats four off. months in Hunter S. Thompson's basement, almost dying a few times over that time, and uh, completely and utterly managing a character act that man down to the point where his own wife couldn't tell which one was Hunter and which one was Johnny Depp. That's, that's method acting. Was that Vanessa Paradis at the time? His wife? No. No, it was his long-time wife. Johnny Depp? Oh, Johnny Depp. No, I mean Hunter's wife. Oh, right, right. Sorry, sorry. because yeah, <laughs> he lived with Hunter. Right. On the owl farm. Colorado. The, the opening that Aspen. was a museum soon. A Gonzo Museum. I think we should go on a pilgrimage. Yeah. And pay pilgrimage. Our, pay our respects to Hunter. So here we are with a... Uh, well, well, doffing, doffing our hats. The, the, this hat was kindly given to me by... Uh, Two sixties young legends, Shug and Helena McCallum. Shout out to them. Uh, thank you very much for the hat. I think you, you gave me it before Eden, uh, or at Eden, which is pretty cool. 
we, we do love our headwear. And uh, this hat I have now given to Chris because last year for Halloween I went to Bomb Scales Scalloween and on the Friday night and Saturday night I went to um, Laurie Duncan's uh, Dia de, de los Muertos night which has now moved on bigger and better to St Luke's venue. We played it a couple of years ago in uh, stereo. And uh, I decided to go that weekend as Hunter S. Thompson, uh, having never dressed as him before for Halloween. And Dad always wanted this shirt, the exact shirt. I could never yeah. find one that was exactly like it. So I lost the fly swap, so I'm just having to make do with the <coughs> Dijon chicken to get his bloody Not recipe. just because it's Hunter S. Thompson's shirt, but yeah. it's a beautiful shirt. Yes, it's a lovely shirt. He had a great taste in shirts, did Hunter S. Nice, nice, nice bit of yellow in it, which is always good. And a uh, nice, nice bucket hat. <laughs> Rennie's Stone Rosie style bucket hat. To hide his uh, red rimmed eyes. Uh, I lost the sunglasses in. Ah, oh, I forgot to put the sunglasses um, on. The other influence that has brought us together is uh, the music you can hear in the background Pink Floyd. Yeah. Who, uh, Two amazing blues musicians. As anybody that reads anything I've written will know, are, I think, the greatest band that ever walked the face of the earth. Bar none. Nothing's... They are the stratosphere that orbit the planet that is music. And you can't get up there. There's nothing sounds like them. There's nothing is like them. And no, nothing like that will ever happen again. I agree with that. For me, obviously music's subjective and each to their own stuff like that. There's... There's no competition between who your favourite band Music's is. Music's subjective. Unless you don't like Pink Floyd, then you're just wrong. <laughs> and I've proven this. Go on my blog and read my articles and you'll see I've proven this. Chrissy Mullen, the biggest Pink Floyd hater ever, is now officially converted to Pink Floyd. You know, He that, just wasn't hearing them in the right way. Yeah, that's what I mean. The, the whole world is divided into two types of people. Those who like Pink Floyd... And those who are about to like Pink Floyd. Because you just have to... It's a band you can't just rush into and appreciate because they don't have two-minute hit songs. Oh, that's true. Well, uh, we, we were playing or are possibly still playing just now. Once it's over, done. done. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Pink Floyd album, Wish You Were Here. So that was the first CD album I bought. Uh, and it's, it's one of my go-to... Sleeping albums. It's an album that even now that was my introduction to Pink Floyd, and then. So you then haven't progressed past the stage of listening to Pink Floyd as a sleeping band, because that's oh, how, yeah, that, yeah, because that, I've, that's how you get into Pink Floyd. You yeah, listen yeah, to them, they go to sleep. Yeah. No, and no, then no. You start I to think, wait. Maybe I should I was listen a, to the end of this. I was album. an I was an active Pink Floyd listener, if and it, a if it wasn't band. for Nirvana, uh, and. Pink Floyd's The Division Bell, I don't think I would have finished my, my standard grades. My, my, it was just really just them on a rotation that I listened to continuously. Mind you, you, you to couldn't aim. go to sleep listening to Piper at the Gates of Dawn. No, I didn't do that, no. Yeah, that but um, quite work out. When, uh, when we were over in South Korea for Zandari Festa last October, uh, I forgot how bad a snorer Gary Mortimer was. So when we went over there, I was the only person that didn't really go out much during the day because they were, how many hours ahead? I don't know, look, maybe, I think nine hours ahead, there, thereabouts anyway. So uh, when we got there, like, we were still out until like maybe like five in the morning and stuff like that, which is still then eight o'clock back here. So you're not really tired at that point. But then we were going home. Obviously Gary, excuse me, had a lot of bevy in him. Not, not tea. <laughs> had a lot of bevy in him, so he was able to just crash out straight away. And then his snoring would kick in. And it was that bad on the first night that I had to message his wife, Laura, on the Facebook, because she was still up back here, how and say, how, how do you stop this? <laughs> How do you deal with it's this? It's bad when someone's a terrible And she says, and she was she was giving me like her top three tips. Uh, is he on his back just now? Put him on his side. Is he on his side just now? Roll him on his front, etc. 
and I was trying all of these. And just eventually, like, uh, I didn't, I didn't want. He didn't look. He didn't look either flammable or inflammable, and I and I didn't have a, a spare gallon of petrol, uh, lying about in the hostel. I mean, I did get that angry that I don't mind admitting that I gave him a wee kick, uh, a gentle, gentle, friendly kick in the the side of the ribs, but um. I, I was just, I, w- I was awake, even with my earplugs in, I was awake. So then Gary was waking up about, um, whatever, like 10 or 11 o'clock in the morning in their time. And then he was going out, and it was only then when he went out, which is so daytime, that I was then able to sleep. So then I wasn't getting up until like maybe 4 or 5 in the afternoon, and then getting ready, and then we were going out. So uh, I, I missed seeing... A few of the things that they did, but um, I always believe when you go anywhere, like you'll see what you're supposed to see. It's it's like it's what I tell people at Glastonbury. Glastonbury's that big. I've worked there for the last three years for Greenpeace. I missed last year. Sorry, three out of the last four years. I missed last year because uh, damn bats. You missed last year because of those damn bats. And because of the damn bats. That's actually a really good pointer. Because of the damn bats, and also because my brother got married on Glastonbury Friday, which was an amazing wedding, one of my favourite weddings ever. So I didn't go, um, which wasn't a bad thing, because I missed, in Mink Levis's words himself, one of the wettest Glastonbury's of all time. Um, so I missed that, and um, I've just found out today that I've been accepted to go work for Greenpeace again this year, so... Happy days! <laughs> I'm going to see Radiohead! I'm going to see Radiohead in the 20th anniversary of their seminal 1997 one of the rumour, well, considered to be by many one of the greatest sets of all time and coming back to Pink Floyd Radiohead for me, so the Beatles are my favourite band of all time Easy Star, all stars do a better version of OK Computer I've, I've heard that, it's very good. Uh, Radiohead are my second favourite band of all time, and I consider Radiohead to be both the Beatles and Pink Floyd of our generation. Ah, oh, come on. I can pay them no higher compliment than that. However, I do love Pink Floyd. You've, you've picked the wrong guy to like, talk about Radiohead with, because I don't like Radiohead. His voice annoys me too much. Each to their own. I uh, much cool, prefer man. the Easy That's Star. Cool. I love OK Computer, the Easy Style Stars version, but... Tom Some Yorks people don't like our band. Nice it, it doesn't bother me in the slightest. It's, it's like, it's music, but I, I wouldn't criticise someone for... Some people don't like your band, but I think they haven't seen your live show. Well, poss- it's possibly. All in the live possibly. Show, really. With Colonel Mustard, it's all in the live show, really. Aye, I mean, it's, it's, it's a happening, what we do. Do you know, it's just, it's, it's bringing a, a community of people who just want to have a good night with no holds barred and... You expect the unexpected in the Dijon versus we say just bringing a lot of people together who just want to have a, a, a happy fun time out um, but how long has it been since you released that last album? The, that album came out in yeah. the 5th of May 5, 5, 2014 20 being a multiple of 5 1 plus 4 equals 5 so years. the law of 5's came in which brings us nicely to your single launch the single launch, yeah, so the, the single launch is going to be the double A side for Cross the Road, Freedom for the Children. But it's a single launch for an album? No. <laughs> it's a Just single, a single, single launch. It's a single launch for the single launch. <laughs> and um, that's also going to be at the the Academy on Saturday the 13th of May. Tickets available, Ticketmaster, online, gigs in Scotland, in person from... Ticket Scotland and ABC Box Office with Dead Man Fall, Scottish Sky Legends, Esperanza. Now, we, we're continuing our... Um, we, we always like, like a charity to benefit from what we do. This kind of goes back to like, even one of the earliest gigs I organised for us um, the Saturday before the referendum, uh, Saturday the 13th of September 2014. It was a concert for change. So, predating all my involvement with the band. I've, I've been a political lobbyist and activist for uh, Greenpeace, Scottish Campaign for Equal Disarmament. I used to be the Glasgow Secretary for the Scottish Palestine Solidarity Campaign, Free Palestine and uh, Scottish Friends of the Earth. 
and uh, we, we chose those four charities to all be the recipients of all the money that came in um, from the ticket sales after like, the sound engineer had been paid in the higher of the venue. So we raised about, I think it was about 450 each for those four organisations, I was pretty chuffed for that and we've always kept like, Yellowland last year, we had a uh, Greenpeace and Scottish Campaign for Nuclear Disarmament had their stalls set up uh, on the, the mezzanine level and the stairs coming up. Um, the ABC gig there in December with Refugee, Scottish Campaign for Nuclear Disarmament again, Fazlane Peace Camp, the longest running peace camp in the world, who came up with a legendary poster that done the rounds. David Cameron is a pure fanny, which he is. And um, this, this, for this gig, we, we've chosen our good pals, Matt Ligate, Stuart Thomas, all the rest of the team, Big Dennis, um, at what we've known as On The Corner since it opened, but it's now rebranded, it's, uh, it's called The Space now, uh, and they're doing some great things there, They've got, there's no such thing as a free lunch cafe, pay what you want. Sweet Aerobics are in there as well, doing their mindfulness, aerobics, Dancing, all fun stuff. Um, you pay what you want in a cafe. You do, yep. You go in and you get food and you eat it and then you pay what you want. Yep. That actually happens. Yep. That's a thing. That is a thing, yep. A thing. A thing. It's a thing as well, it's also a thing. Yeah. Yep. They're, they're, doing, they're doing really great things there. Um, they're having a. So, from our tickets for the, the academy, one pound from every ticket sold is, is going to them to help them carry on and do more of the good stuff that they're doing. So, big up the space. Keep on keeping on, brothers and sisters there. Loving your luck. So is the chicken and the damn bats. So, check out the Yellow Movement. Check out New Hellfire Club Glasgow.co.uk for all the local happenings on the music scene. We are the top dogs for unsigned music, aren't we? Definitely, yeah. If you're, yeah. In, a, if you're in a band and you need help, then contact New Hellfire Club and we'll set you on the right path. Uh, this has been Chris Heron of the Gonzo Division and the Dijon Sop from Colonel Muscle of the Dijon Five and the Yellow Movement. And we'll see you all in the pit soon. Peace, love, and mustard. Slanger.